Hello everyone. As like our previous video, this is a continuation part of introduction to the vitamins. So in this video, we'll be talking about differences, uh, classification of vitamins and the differences between fat soluble and water soluble vitamins. So vitamins are which the compounds which are organic in nature and required in minute quantities for the normal growth and uh, body functioning, right? So vitamins broadly classified into two types, fat soluble and water soluble, okay? Fat soluble vitamins again sub classified into four types vitamin A, okay, vitamin D, vitamin K, okay, and vitamin E. Vitamin E. There are four types vitamin A, otherwise known as retinol. There are three types of vitamin A, I mean, like with three forms of vitamin A retinol, retinal, retinoic acid. Beta carotene is a pro vitamin form of. Like that means any vitamin uh, you can say inactive form the previous form of vitamin a functional actual functional form of vitamin to previous to that that will be known as pro vitamin. So the pro vitamin for vitamin A is beta carotene which is present in plant sources. Okay. So once it enters into our body because our food sources will be inclusive of plant. Okay. Plant based fruits vegetables. So when you consume so this beta carotene will be converted into vitamin A. So from beta carotene you will be getting vitamin A. So beta carotene is a pro vitamin form of vitamin A. And vitamin D is otherwise known as cal cholecalciferol, like sunshine vitamin. And vitamin K is for uh, coagulating factor, right? So, philopenones and minopenones are there. Vitamin E known as tocopherols, which is a prominent antioxidant, right? So, now coming to the water soluble vitamins, there are two categories are there water soluble vitamins, non B complex and B complex. Non B complex that we have ascorbic acid, vitamin C, okay, it is also a prominent antioxidant next to vitamin E. And B complex vitamins again they are divided into three types based on their function. Okay, so based on the function like energy releasing, hematopoietic, and other. So energy releasing in the sense carbohydrate metabolism. The main source of energy in our body is glucose. When glucose undergo glycolysis, this is a cycle electron transport chain, we will get ATP. So out of all these three processes, the set of B complex vitamins will be assisting those enzymes. So enzymes we have already studied. So enzymes need coenzymes or cofactors for their activity. With the, in absence of these coenzymes and cofactor, they are not active, right? That coenzyme part provided by B complex vitamins. So what are they? Uh, like coming to B complex vitamins, we have B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9 and B12. So all these are there. First, we'll see the total number of white B complex vitamins. Then we'll see the segregation, energy releasing, hematopoietic, and other. So B1, otherwise known as thymine. B2 is known as riboflavin. B3 known as niacin. B5 is pantothenic acid. B6 is pyridoxine. B7 is biotin. B9 is folic acid. B12 is cyanocobalamin. Right? You can say cobalamin. Right? All these are there. So out of all these numbers. So three categories you can say the ends the B complex vitamins which are useful for energy releasing that means ATP production. So B1, B2, B3, this is B7 and B5. So all these are involved in energy releasing. So any one of the pathway like glycolysis to connecting link, oxidative decarboxylation, TCA cycle and electron transport chain, they're all involved in any one of the metabolic pathway assisting the O's enzymes and involved in production of ATP. Right. And hematopoietic, that means synthesis of RBC or new cell formation, you require folic acid and B12. Okay. And other mainly protein metabolism. For protein metabolism, you require pyridoxine B6. See, they are not directly helping the enzymes. They are converting, they have super forms like active forms. Thymine is a active form is like TPP. Thymine pyrophosphate. So this thymine pyrophosphate will be the coenzyme form of thymine. Similarly, riboflavin, you have FAD. Niacin, it has got NAD. And biotin, biocytidine. And pantothenic acid, CoASH. So with these coenzyme forms, they are involved in the uh, uh, coenzymatic function of the enzyme, particular enzyme. And they have this productivity. And coming to the differences of fat soluble and water soluble, you see here they are differ in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 factors. Solubility, at the name itself we are telling water soluble vitamins means they are soluble in water, fat soluble means they are soluble in fat and their digestion absorption is also similar to the lipids. So absorption is simple for water soluble vitamins, 
and the digestion absorption storage is similar to lipids in case of fat soluble vitamins storage as i mentioned you however the excess amounts you take water soluble vitamins they are not going to store in your body they simply excrete so there is no storage but if you take what fat soluble vitamins in one large quantity they are going to be stored in the body especially in the liver and excretion this is immediately excreted once they absorb okay for performing their function and they are not going to be excreted in case of fat soluble vitamins excess intake however as they are going to be excreted there is no hyper vitaminosis or toxic effects in case of water soluble vitamins but more than desired if you take fat soluble vitamins there there you have toxic effects they are known as hyper vitaminosis and in case of deficiency as you you were supposed to take water soluble vitamins on day to day basis if you are stopped to take those water soluble vitamins in one or two days the symptoms are immediate okay the deficiency manifestations are immediate but in case of fat soluble vitamins as they are going to be stored in the liver they will be supplying regularly so their manifestations are slow okay treatment so if you are getting that disease uh, like water soluble deficiency if you supply them immediately you will cure you will be getting cured or like a regular dietary supply is a uh, treatment and one large dose okay if you give the one large dose it will serve you for one month to six months and treatment will be like prominent so here you can make out see some pictures what i am seeing the deficiency manifestations of uh, fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins like bite out spot xerophthalmia that means whenever vitamin deficiency come to your mind that related to i that is a okay you should think of vitamin a vitamin a is required for your healthy vision okay any eye related disorder related to a vitamin a next is bones you see bended bones uh, unformed uh, like what to say there is no proper uh, uh, no bone bone uh, rib cage formation harrison sulcus okay bow legs so all these are because of the deficiency of vitamin d so as like vitamin a you think of vitamin d is related to bone metabolism okay and this is vitamin e premature aging okay premature aging acne and varicose veins are because of vitamin e deficiency and this is bleeding uncontrolled bleeding okay so because of deficiency of vitamin k so all these pictures to make aware that when you think of uncontrolled bleeding you should think of vitamin k when you think of premature aging you think of vitamin e because vitamin e is the antioxidant which looks keeps you younger and it stops becoming you age okay and the same time bone related disorders vitamin d eye related disorders vitamin a so that's all about vitamins introduction part thanks for listening thank you